Are we on? Are we going? Test, test one, two, test, test. Tip of the tongue, teeth in the lips. La 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 la. La 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 la. The friends of the opera is here. Well, we're starting week two of quarantine, and I know some of you guys have been doing great. You've read some books, caught up on some rest. Some of you guys are like me, and you're bored enough that in order to warm up your voice for a video blog, you're willing to sing Phantom of the Opera to yourself in your back spare bedroom. And that's not where you want to find yourselves, friends. But luckily for you, and luckily for me, I have compiled Andrew Chronic's official guide of what to do when you're bored over these next few weeks in quarantine. So, welcome to week two of the Capstone Youth blog. This is just going to be a fun one for you. Uh, no real Bible teaching today or anything like that, but just some helpful suggestions uh, that I know I would recommend to you guys as you have a little bit more spare time over these next few weeks uh, of just what you can do besides play tons of video games or spend a quarter on the table or figure out different ways to torture your siblings, whatever you've been doing to pass your time in the next couple weeks. Maybe add some of this in and hopefully that will help you be a little more productive, a little more entertained, and we see, we'll see what we can do. So uh, the first thing that I want to recommend to you guys is some resources, uh, even some books and things like that of what we can do with uh, different studies, devotionals kind of things uh, in the next few weeks. So the first things I actually want to recommend to you are uh, both found online. One is on a really cool website that I highly recommend to you guys called blueletterbible.org. Uh, and so we'll check out a couple of devotionals uh, and even maybe introduce uh, a couple of commentaries to you guys, biblical commentaries. And then uh, the other thing I want to recommend to you guys would be a YouTube channel that I think is really cool. So let's hop over there on the computer and see what we can find about that. All right, guys, so like I said, we are at blueletterbible.org. I want to show you a couple of things on this website, and then we'll switch over to YouTube really quick. So if you go to search, study, and then devotions, third tab over, just click that right there. And then there's a couple of devotions, uh, the Blue Letter Bible Daily Promises, day by day. But what I want to recommend to you guys is morning and evening devotions uh, written by a gentleman who was a great preacher, a great uh, Christian, a great leader uh, of the faith uh, back in the 19th century, uh, Mr. Charles Spurgeon. And so these morning and even evening devotions are just really easy. So you just click on that uh, and then, you know, it will take you directly to whatever uh, this morning and this evening is. So we're filming this right now uh, in the afternoon. So we'll go to this evening. You just click on that. And then look at that, March 22nd, you have a Bible verse and then just a thought from him uh, that I think is really, really well written and really well done. And so again, you can go there twice a day, morning and evening uh, for a free devotion on Blue Letter Bible. They also have an app. If you just look that up, it's just Blue Letter Bible again on the app. Uh, another thing while we're here, if you go, guys go to study, then you'll find Bible commentaries. Uh, and then we'll click on text commentaries. Now, some of these are really well written, and some of these are uh, extremely academic. And so uh, they may not be what is best for us right now. However, there are a couple that I wanted to recommend to you guys, particularly this one uh, by John MacArthur. Um, and so if you just click on John MacArthur out of this list, uh, obviously, you know, he, if you don't know it, uh, then your parents probably know who he is and your grandparents definitely know who he is. He was a famous preacher uh, from California uh, who was on radio shows and things like that. But he does these great Bible introduction books. So if you're looking at studying a book of the Bible, uh, then, you know, we can just go to Genesis. And then he uh, just goes here and he just lays out everything from the title, like why is it written there, author and date, some of these questions that we talk about on Wednesday nights where we talk about who said what and things like that, the background and setting. Uh, this is something that's a great resource for you guys. Some of the themes that you find in the book, um, and then you just keep scrolling down. And there's just a ton of information, uh, which is really well written, but it's also pretty concise. You know, it's not going to be something that you guys can't handle. And so if you'll go there, again, is study to uh, text commentaries underneath Bible commentaries, and then you're looking for Mr. John MacArthur. 
And one final thing I want to show you guys is a resource uh, that you probably know of uh, is if you go to YouTube and then you just look up The Bible Project. Uh, these are free video summaries of pretty much all the books of the Bible. So this is what we're looking for right now. So we go to their page. There's 82 million subscribers, so it is not so just me who likes it. the Bible is one of the most influential books of all. Uh, apparently, if you just click there, then a video starts. Um, oh, what is the Bible Project? They're letting you know what it is. Anyways, um, so it has everything from like what you know, is the Sabbath to what are parables. Uh, but then you can also look for specific books of the Bible. So we have been in Isaiah, so we're back in uh, the search bar. We go to the Bible Project Isaiah. And then they actually split this up into two different videos, but there's an overview of Isaiah 1 through 39. There's an overview of Isaiah 40 through 66. So uh, this is eight minutes long a piece, and so it's great video summaries, which you haven't seen them. Um, they just you know, kind of draw out some of the major themes, literally draw them out uh, in cartoon versions. I know that sounds a little weird, uh, but they're really well done, really well put together. And so as you guys are studying over these next couple of weeks, I would encourage you guys to use these resources to help you do that well. And so hopefully you guys can use those couple websites to enhance uh, both your scripture reading um, and then also just maybe do some creative learning, things like that over the next few weeks. Uh, a couple other resources I want to recommend to you as well. If you go to iBooks on your iPhone, your iPad, whatever else, uh, there are a couple of free books that I really want to recommend to you guys. Like I said, completely free to download. Uh, they're really cool. One of which is probably my favorite book, uh, The Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan. Uh, it's written in 1678, so it's a little old, I'll give you that. Uh, but uh, it's a really creative telling of basically what uh, Christian's journey is, uh, of you know the different things that they may face and things like that, whatever else. Uh, it's considered a classic. Uh, it's really well done, and it's free. So uh, again, it's John Bunyan, The Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, John Bunyan, not Paul Bunyan. There is no big blue ox named uh, Babe, right? It's been a minute. I think his name was Babe. Anyways, uh, not that Bunyan, but John Bunyan. Uh, so I would recommend that to you guys as well. And then also, if you guys will look up R.C. Sproul, there's a book called How to Develop a Christian Conscience that I thought was really good because obviously we think about conscience, uh, the basic idea of what is good uh, and what is bad and why people you know, choose what is good most of the time. And so it's sort of the idea of taking that and developing that into a Christian mindset, not just a moral mindset. Uh, and so I thought that was really good. Uh, there are a few more books by both of those guys. Uh, they're also available for free if you speed through those. Um, I, I haven't uh, read those at least recently. Uh, and so I can't blanketly re recommend those guys to you. Uh, but I know exactly what they're going to say and things like that. But those two books were both really good for me. Uh, but you can also check out some of their other works if you get through those. Uh, if you're willing to pay a little bit of money, uh, just three of my favorite author authors as well. Uh, A.W. Tozer. C.S. Lewis and Tim Keller. So if you want to check out those books, especially I know a few A.W. Tozer and uh, Tim Keller books are, actually I think all three are pretty reasonably priced in the like 99 cents to 2.99 range if you're looking for something to read over the next couple of days. Now, I'll level with you here. We've covered mostly Christian resources. We've covered mostly, you know, things that, you know, you can read, you can study and things like that. Um, but even though I'm a professional Christian, even though I'm your student pastor, I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to spend the next however many weeks, 15 hours a day, just reading the Bible. I know, I know. Reprimand me when you can, uh, either through email or phone for now, in person when we all get back together. Uh, but I'll level with you. If you're also, you know, just like, hey, like, you know, I'd like to catch some sort of sporting event, maybe a movie, something like that. Well, don't worry, friend. I got you covered there, too. Let me get my handy-dandy list. So, if you're looking for sports, these are some events that are completely free to you if you just look them up on YouTube. So, the 2019 Home Run Derby it was really awesome if you missed it. I know. You know, some guys don't like baseball. It's slow. Home Run Derby is awesome, though, because it's just, you know, grown men just hitting balls as far as possible, as many as possible on a time limit. It's really a lot of fun. So the 2019 uh, featured a battle between Vlad Guerrero Jr. and Jock Peterson uh, that was really epic. I think they had to go to two different swing, off, swing offs. Uh, and then Pete Alonzo from the New York Mets won, uh, reigning National League Rookie of the Year. And so if you're looking for some baseball fix, that would be a great one as well. 
Uh, you can also look up the 2008 Home Run Derby. Uh, that was actually the original uh, most homers in a round by Josh Hamilton. And then also the 2017 Home Run Derby is completely on YouTube as well. That's Aaron Judge dominating everybody. If you're an Aaron Judge guy looking at you, Lawson Nichols, I got you, buddy. So check those out. If you're looking for a basketball fix, uh, I would recommend these dunk contests to you. I know. Dunk contest, home run derby. It's like, you know, Andrew knows what's awesome. I do know it's awesome. You're welcome, people. So uh, you can go back to the 2016 dunk contest if you enjoyed this one this past February with Aaron Gordon. Uh, he is back, and he is uh, battling with Zach Levine, formerly of the Timberwolves, now with the Bulls. Uh, but that was a really, really fun dunk contest. Uh, Aaron Gordon also gets snubbed on that one. Spoilers, but, uh, but it's really, uh, really fun. 2009, you have Dwight Howard battling Nate Robinson, who I think was approximately like five foot six. He might have been a little bit taller than that, but it was really awesome to see like a seven foot guy and a five foot six guy, like, you know, David and Goliath kind of thing going back and forth. So 2009, completely free on YouTube. And also the 1988 dunk contest as Dominique Wilkins versus Michael Jordan. Children, you have to know who these two guys were, all right? The human highlight reel and then the real greatest of all time, Michael Jordan. I said it. We're going to leave it at that. But check those out if you're looking for a basketball fix. And then finally, if you need your football fix, this is going to make my neighbor across the street very happy. The 2005 BCS National Championship game. Complete game available on YouTube as the Texas Longhorns versus the USC Trojans. Uh, and it was a classic Rose Bowl, man. Uh, really unbelievable game. Uh, that was probably the best game I've ever seen in my life. The second best game is the 2013 Iron Bowl, Auburn versus Alabama. Uh, crazy ending. If you don't remember that, you should check that out. Uh, and then for all you Clemson Tiger fans, the 2017 college football playoff championship game is uh, there as well uh, with Renfro in the corner with the illegal pit by Jordan Leggett. Uh, what? Who brought that up? Anyways, uh, I'm not an Alabama fan. I'm just a sore loser Georgia fan. That's okay. But anyways, all those sporting events are available on YouTube if you need a fix there. Let's keep going. Rapid Fire Movies. These are available on Netflix uh, and also on Prime Video, assuming you guys have access to that. Uh, if you do not, then I apologize. But uh, if you are looking for something to watch on Netflix, uh, I would recommend the movie Miracle to you. This is also be available on Disney Plus, I would guess. Uh, but I found it on Netflix. Uh, it's the story of the 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team. Uh, again, we'll get out of sports in just a minute, but it's really well done. Uh, it's rated PG uh, as well, parents. Uh, but it's just a really incredible story. It's a really well-made movie. Uh, it's an you know, underdog sports movie, kind of typical, but uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. If you haven't seen it, it probably came out, I think, 2004, so some of you guys were alive. Most of you guys were not. Uh, most of you guys, or all you guys at least, were not old enough to watch that movie. Uh, way back in the 80s, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones. All right, These are on Netflix as well. There's a few more of them. Any Indiana Jones movie is going to be pretty good. Some are better than others. You can ask me for more details if you'd like. Uh, my only recommendation is don't watch the new one with Shia LaBeouf. If that is available to you, you should just forget that one happened. Uh, and so those I loosely recommend to you as well as movies. Uh, and then some other suggestions and things you can do. Man, just go outside when you can. Stay in your yard. You know, Don't come in contact with you know, people. But the virus in general is not airborne. Um, it's not like outside is dangerous. Uh, and so if you can go outside and, you know, Practice your sports, dance, whatever you do. Uh, that'd be really awesome. Or you can, you know, help dad out or mom and dad out with uh, some yard work, some different gardening, things like that that they may be able to do uh, because there is a lot of uh, just data that suggests that people who stay stay inside all day uh, have, you know, higher depression rates, can get sad, you know, can do these thing, kind of things. But getting outside, getting active, getting moving does help your uh, both your body but also your mind. And so that'd be really good when you're able to do that. Uh, invite your parents to do whatever you're doing. So instead of just going downstairs and playing video games, maybe say, hey, mom, dad, you want to play this video game with me? Uh, and then, you know, just invite them into the different things that you're doing to spend your time. And then here are the last couple of uh, really good ones, I think. Uh, write letters or cards to people who can't get out much. So if you guys have grandparents uh, who aren't able to get around as much because they're a little bit more uh, susceptible to catching the virus and things like that, just you know, write them a note, send them, uh, send them a card in the mail, uh, or even send them a text, you know, FaceTime and do whatever, do whatever else. Just let them know that you are thinking about them. That's going to be a big thing for them in this moment uh, because you know everybody's getting lonely. Everybody you know wants to have outside influence, and so we can still do that. It just takes a little bit more work, uh, and so don't be lazy. Push yourselves. 
uh, make the intentional effort to relate to them. At the same point, uh, do that with your friends. Make sure that these conversations that you guys are having aren't just, you know, to keep the Snapchat streak going, uh, aren't just about nonsense because, you know, you want to be people or you should want to be people who are continuing to pray for your friends, to pray with your friends. And so that's something that's really easy to do. Just switch the conversation at some point. You have nothing but time, right? Switch the conversation at some point. Say, hey, how can I be praying for you? How are you dealing with all this? Are you getting along with your parents? Are you getting along with your siblings? You know, what's going on? Uh, are you scared? You know, there's a lot of different things that are going on in the world, obviously. And so just talk with your friends about this and just ask, you know, hey, how can I be praying for you? Even if they say, I don't know. It's like, okay, great. Well, just know that I am praying for you. Uh, and that is a great way that you guys can spend a little bit more intentional time uh, throughout these days. And so that pretty much wraps it up. Those are my official suggestions of what you can do if you are bored to tears, uh, like I'm pretty much getting to. Uh, and so uh, if you have any other uh, questions or anything like that, obviously uh, just reach out to me throughout the week. Uh, if I can do anything for you, just let me know. Love you guys, praying for you, uh, and looking forward to seeing you guys Wednesday uh, on Zoom chats with the boys at 6 and the girls at 7. You guys be safe, be well. We'll talk to you soon.